Hi, and welcome to Photography with Emery, and that would be me. And before I begin today's episode, I just want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and uh, video viewers out there. I reached a little milestone about uh, just over 10,000 total upload views now, and it's all possible because of you guys out there. I also love the comments. Do keep them coming. Thank you very much. And uh, today is not just episode 14. Today is also part two of the Flash mini series I'm doing. This time it's on Flash Sync Speed. Let's get started. A definition for this flash sync speed or X sync speed, the X standing for xenon, which is the gas commonly found in flash tubes, is the fastest shutter speed you can use where the burst of light from the flash can entirely illuminate the film or sensor. To understand this a little better, let's use a visual example. As I explained in episode 2 of my photography series, the focal plane shutter in the majority of SLRs, both film and digital, has two parts called curtains. When your camera takes a photo, the first curtain snaps open to expose the film or sensor to light, and the second curtain snaps down to complete the exposure. Now at slower shutter speeds, the sensor is completely exposed to light, but at faster shutter speeds, usually over 1 250th of a second for most modern digital SLRs, the curtains form a slit that travels across the sensor. So the fastest shutter speed you can use up to the point before the curtains start forming a slit is basically the flash sync speed. Now what happens if we use a shutter speed uh, faster than the sync speed? Well, unless we're using a special flash mode, many of which I'll cover in my next episode, the flash fires when the first curtain has completely opened. At shutter speeds above the sync speed, the second curtain is already well on its way to closing down by the time the first curtain opens. So when the first curtain opens, your flash fires, but with the second curtain already partially closed, you get a picture that looks something like this. That dark section on the photo you're seeing is a shutter, the second curtain to be precise. Now keep in mind that when an image appears on the center of your camera, it's upside down. That's why the blacked out part of the image caused by the second curtain appears on the bottom if we view the image right side up. But what if we're in a situation where we would still like to use the flash, but also a higher shutter speed? For example, many photographers use flash in broad daylight to help reduce the intensity of shadows on their subjects. The thing is, though, if you happen to be shooting a portrait, then you're likely going to use a large aperture to create a small depth of field in order to get a blurry background. If it's a sunny day, your shutter speed will likely be very fast, hovering in the 1 1,000th to 1 4,000th of a second range. This shutter speed is well over the sync speed. Even using a dark, neutral density filter might not be enough to slow the shutter speed down enough in all cases. However, if you have a flash that supports what most manufacturers call FP mode, then you may be in luck. According to the majority of sources I've researched, FP stands for focal plane, but less commonly I have also seen flat pulse and fast pulse used. When using FP mode, the flash fires off in very rapid succession as your camera takes the picture in order to illuminate the sensor as evenly as possible as the slit formed by the first and second curtains passes in front of the sensor. And if you're wondering how rapidly the flash fires, well I found some references pointing to as fast as 50 kilohertz. That's 50,000 times a second. Keep in mind, though, flashes generally don't fire for a full second, but that's still quite a few pulses for such fast shutter speeds. Check out my blog for more info about this. Even at 1200 frames per second, my high-speed video camera couldn't separate those individual pulses. All we see is a pre-flash, which the camera uses to calculate the correct power output of the flash for a proper exposure, and there's the second brighter flash where the high-frequency pulsing occurs. Basically, it looks like one big flash of light. Now, there are some downsides to using the flash in this mode. For example, the guide number of the flash is generally reduced, and using FP mode may be hard on the electronic components of the flash. I found some great links to websites detailing this further, so do check it out if you'd like to find out more. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed that episode, and stay tuned for the next one, because there I'll be showcasing what you can actually do with your flash. This is red eye, first curtain, second curtain, and a couple of other things you can do. And uh, do subscribe if you haven't already, that way you can stay up to date with my stuff, and you can check me out on Facebook and become a fan there. I also post little tidbits that I don't uh, do on my blog, which reminds me, check out my blog, because I always do a supplemental post after my videos. So, I hope to see you next time. Take care.